you know my story, right? Just happened to notice that the old ironic coffee shop, which was located here, was for sale. And I went in and I said to my friend Madeline at CrossFit, I was like, I don't know, maybe I should buy ironic. And she got tears in her eyes and she's like, you can have all the money in my retirement account. And and I was like, what what is <laughs> like, that's crazy. But also she's a person who has like a different attachment to money than I would say many people do. And we had been in this discussion about what she was gonna do with her retirement money. And I'm also the kind of person who sees an empty building and has a gajillion ideas for it. And there was something about her reaction that really just really struck a chord with me. And I think that I've always had the support of my friends and family. I've always had people, my husband in particular has always been like, every time I said, hey, I could do this with this building. He's like, go for it, do it, you know, whatever. You know my story, right? You know, when I became informed about this real disparity between Italian style mozzarella, real cheese, fermented product, like what it's actually supposed to be, same with ricotta, and you know what has evolved since the 1950s and 60s of what American style mozzarella and ricotta are, and that all of this kind of injustice in the way that it's been created and marketed has been done on the backs of the American dairy farmer. Like that was like, no, we're we're not going to do that. We're going to do this in the right way. And we're going to show our children that we're going to do this in the right way. And we're going to do right by the farmers, but we're also going to do right by our chefs. Every single vendor that I have worked with since COVID has escalated the cost of whatever we're doing. We haven't raised prices in three and a half years. In fact, in some cases, we've lowered them. You know my story, right? Our biggest thing that we do now is we're having artists come out, like Jason Mewes, actors from The Wizard, like back in the day, like California and all that kind of stuff. That's awesome. So we've had a lot of stuff, and then now just this, this year, our big one this year is Nickelodeon, which is ridiculous. It's the biggest thing I've done. You know my story, right? You know, everyone in my family had what they liked. So if you literally were to be in our house on like say a Saturday or something, whatever, in, in one room you hear like my sisters are playing like Hall & Oates or, or um, Billy Joel or whatever. One brother would be playing, I don't know, Funkadelic or Led Zeppelin. The other, one, one other brother was a really music fan. He got, he, he got it from us. And uh, you know, I'm playing, you know, I was a teenager in the 80s, so you know, playing um, you know, the Mode or, or things like that, whatever. And uh, then my mom's right downstairs, like when I started going off on goal or something, like, you know, whatever, Santana. And um, yeah, so it's just like literally, and that's where, you know, my encyclopedic knowledge comes from. It's just like just being around music. And then, you know, being at the stores, um, even when I was, you know, everyone, everyone worked at stores, everyone had a job. So even like, I was nine, 10 years old, I was working at the store. And once I had kids, I, I've been an entrepreneur my entire adult life. So I graduated from college with a degree in music business. I was in the music industry for a long time. And then I did a bunch of consulting with different nonprofits. The first one was music, but then it kind of rolled off. I worked with foster care for a while. Um, I did one in like health and fitness. Um, and so I kind of, I've always been an entrepreneur or, or an, a consultant. But once I got to the point where I was like a business owner and I was a mom, Mm -hmm. that is like the the most adulting I feel like we had like gotten to the point where we were the most adulting and we had two kids under two um and I was a business owner but the business was working out of our house we didn't have full-time child care they were going to like a mother's day out program like two half days a week so like I was juggling a lot you know my story right this is my safe space. This is my comfort zone and get emotional. This is where I have the most gratitude. What was art to you prior to 2018 when it wasn't a creative thing? I, I actually feel a little ashamed to say that okay. I didn't notice. Right. And now it's hurting my money because <laughs> I keep, I keep everybody. I'm like, Oh my God, that's amazing. Like, and I just, I just want it all. But yeah, I didn't art art to me was, and I think I have a problem being in this art world because art to me was you went to school, fine art, you studied, 
like I, I had, and I didn't know I had a preconceived notion, but I did. And so I still struggle some days thinking that I am an artist doing what I do and that I fit into it. But who says you need education? <laughs> you know my story, right? It was a moment of integrity that you could feel in the room. It was punk rock, man. Like, yeah. like, that's the best comparison I can give. It was an intentional subversion of norms. It was, you know, intentionally going a different way than everything that had been set up all the way since back in Prohibition. You know, this was a very button up industry. It was business first. It was very focused on efficiency, very focused on uh, product commodities uh, more than, uh, you know, product passion. And that changed and it changed because of people who knew what they were doing, like Dale, Sam, you know, uh, none of these guys were unaware of the fact that they were going to piss some people off by doing it. They did it for the exact opposite reason. They knew that you needed to push those norms. You needed to push those bounds because that was the only way that anyone was going to pay attention to you. Because if you had to sell this product, this more expensive, gloriously inefficient and in hard to make, uh, hard to sell, unknown product, and you weren't doing anything to get people's attention, it was never going to work. If you're an aspiring entrepreneur, one that's looking to expand, contact the FreeMind Network today and we'll help you scale, we'll help you start, we're going to be there for you in your corner. You know my story, right?